Today I fucked up by drinking a 7-Eleven cold brew. Today I fucked up by drinking a 7-Eleven cold brew. To preface this, I don't drink a lot of caffeine. The occasional coffee, a soda every now and again, nothing crazy. Now, onto the story. My boyfriend and I were on our way to a show. It was hot and I was kinda tired. So instead of grabbing a Gatorade or something similar, I decided to get an iced coffee. I was completely unaware that this decision would drastically change the course of the day. I got a mocha cold brew, in a medium big gulp cup. I drank the whole thing on the way to the train station. I should have realized that this was not the play when I tasted it. It was so strong, it tasted borderline alcoholic. We got on the train, and this is when things started to go terribly awry. I never get motion sickness, especially not on the train, but almost immediately I started feeling nauseous and I was getting the spins while looking out the window. I still thought nothing of this and figured that there was a first time for everything. It's about that time that I felt a gurgling in my gut and realized that this wasn't your ordinary motion sickness, and something was terribly wrong. I managed to hold everything together until I got to Penn Station, in NYC. I had to find a bathroom, immediately. My boyfriend knows this, and the hunt for the bathroom was on. I'm barely keeping it together, and walking as fast as possible, which, at that time, was not too fast. If I walked any faster, it would have been a disaster. Finally we found a bathroom and I rush in. Dear reader, let me just tell you, without going into too graphic detail, what came out of me was complete liquid and required two courtesy flushes. I was drenched in sweat and shaky, but I thought that the worst was over. I was wrong. We exited Penn Station, and almost immediately I felt dizzy. Like really dizzy. Like about to faint dizzy. We were walking down the street and I had to sit down on the sidewalk so I didn't drop where I stood. I thought that it was just from the heat. After all, it was in the high 90s. Or maybe it was because I hadn't eaten all day. My amazing boyfriend ran across the street and got me a piece of pizza and a drink. At this point, I am a sweaty, dizzy, shaky mess sitting on the sidewalk. I try and eat, but it was almost as if my body forgot how to eat. I managed to get down a half a slice though. I had to stop. I was so nauseous that I was sure it was all going to come back up. Needless to say, I did not feel any better. It took over an hour, and drinking two more waters before I felt capable of walking again. At this point we had to catch the train to Newark to get to the show. I could have just gone home at this point, but I'm stubborn, and was sure that I'd be fine. We got to Newark okay, but as soon as we got off the train, right to the bathroom. At this point I'm convinced that I'm dying. I was still really shaky, so we decided to get something to eat so I could try and get more food in me. I got two mozzarella sticks in me before I got super nauseous again. We get to the show, which was only about a five minute walk from where we got some food. As soon as we get in, bathroom, again. Now I was starting to get a screaming headache, but luckily we had Advil with us. Unluckily, it did not work at all. I made it through the show, and managed to shakily stumble back onto the trains to get home. A quick Google search for, sick from 711 cold brew coffee, made me realize that I overdosed on caffeine. I drank that giant cold brew over 15 hours ago. It's now nearly 5 a.m. I'm exhausted. My heart is still racing, and I'm still a shaky mess. Thankfully the trips to the bathroom have stopped. Never again, 7-Eleven cold brew. I learned that lesson. Too long did not read. I drank a big 7-Eleven cold brew iced coffee and overdosed on caffeine. ETA. This is far from my first run-in with stimulants, if you get what I'm saying. Edit not overdosing, just partaking, surprisingly, this was the worst though. This was just a terrible experience. ETA, again, if anyone knows a way to counteract this that doesn't involve medical intervention, please let me know. I need to sleep. ETA, yet again, by medium big gulp, I mean the 30 ounces 1, or 0.89 liters, for literally anyone outside of the US. Update. Still no sleep, 21 hours after drinking that cold brew from hell. My awesome boyfriend is going to the store to get me Gatorade though. I love him so much. Still trying to eat without becoming nauseous, unsuccessfully, and still trying to get even just an hour of sleep. This sucks. Update 2. Still no sleep. It's been 24 hours since I drank that devil juice. I managed to eat a banana. Thank you for your suggestions. I've been drinking water and Gatorade. Still really shaky and nauseous. Getting really worried that I got a contaminated batch, or possibly fermented, as someone suggested, 
and may have food poisoning, as many of you have suggested. Not happy at all. Update 3. Some of you are actually scaring me a bit. I looked back into my Apple Watch heart rate data, and when I was resting, trying not to pass out yesterday, my heart rate was jumping between 48 BPM and 140 BPM over a 7 minutes time frame. I was sitting on the ground resting. Should I go to the hospital? I'm actually really scared. Right now it's going between 87 BPM and 103 BPM while resting, but I am mildly panicking. What is happening? Update 4. I'm not on my way to the hospital. A kind stranger talked me down, and so did my amazingly wonderful boyfriend, who's been dealing with this shit right along with me for two days now. If I get worse instead of better, I will go to the hospital. Kind of just waiting for the crash now and hydrating. Thank you to you all for all your help and suggestions. Update 5, final update, I slept. For about an hour and a half, but still. I'm also able to eat a little bit, and am still hydrating. I'm gonna be okay guys. Thank you for all your kind words, your help, and suggestions. You guys actually helped me a lot. Hope you all never have to deal with this, ever. It's no fun. Thanks again. XX. And here I am drinking four of the super big gulps of their cold brew everyday man facepalming. Don't mind me, I'll just be over here washing down my Adderall with a pot of black coffee. That sounds awful though, seriously. I have a fear of being sick in public so I probably would have had a panic attack. You had the shits and your go-to food was pizza and mozzarella sticks? Loudly crying. This actually sounds like food poisoning. It may have been exacerbated by the caffeine sensitivity but this really has all the earmarks of food poisoning. In a lot of cases the food service equipment at fast food and convenience stores is not well maintained. Caffeine is one of the worst things humans put in their bodies. Even people who don't feel the effects from it potentially damage their hearts with it. It needs a warning label at the very least. Today I fucked up by claiming to be a part of the Italian mob. So this happened a few weeks back, but the consequences are still haunting me till this day. I was at a local cafe, enjoying my coffee and scrolling through Reddit. A person next to me, who we will call John, peeped onto my screen. I joke about being part of countless subreddits and this somehow led him to ask if I was part of any real communities. The caffeine and my fucked up sense of humor resulted in me claiming, yeah, I'm a part of the Italian mob. Regardless of the sarcasm I tried to convey, John believed it. Not just believed it, but he was impressed. He passed it off as a joke at first, but as our small talk progressed, it seemed he genuinely thought I was part of the mob. As an introvert with very few friends, I found this attention sort of exhilarating. The more we talked, the more I kind of fell into the character. We ended up exchanging numbers, and I went along with it as a sort of long-term joke, thinking he'd figure out the truth sooner or later. Long story short, he didn't. And the joke has snowballed since then. Turns out, John is a pretty social guy and he has been introing me to his friends as the Italian mob guy. I was taken aback at first, but chose to play along because well, what else could I do? This persona has now become a part of my life. People started giving me, respectful, nods, and I've had to keep up with it. I've been watching tons of mafia movies to understand the lingo and make sure my portrayal is somewhat accurate. Hell, I've even started dressing sharper to fit the part. It follows me around everywhere, from the local pub to my gym. Everyone, even the damn barista, refers to me as the mob guy. Each day, I am filled with constant paranoia that one day I will be exposed. To make matters worse, John has dropped hints about knowing an actual former mob member he wants to introduce me to. I'm just hoping he never goes through with it. So, here I am stuck in this absurd predicament. Constantly living in fear of the day someone pulls the rug from under me when they realize that the only family I'm associated with is my mum, dad and two cats. I messed up by allowing a caffeine-infused joke to morph into an alternate persona that I now have to maintain for God knows how long. My life has turned into some bizarre sitcom plot and I have no idea how to escape. Pray for me, read it. Too long did not read. Made a joke about being a part of the Italian mob to a stranger. Now I am immersed in a persona of being a mobster and don't know how to get out of it without looking like a weirdo. Join the mob then. So this guy is annoying you? Take him out and whack him. I'm pretty sure he realized straight away and has just got a bunch of people in on it to see how far you'll take it. Who is going to crack first? I think you should find another cafe to start with. Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. 
Today I fucked up by telling my cousin the truth. For privacy reasons my younger cousin will be called Jessica and my older cousin, her older brother, will be called Evan. Me and Jessica went on a vacation together. It was pretty much us just hanging out for a whole week. Jessica and Evan have had a rough family life. Most of their family members are addicts or liars. Jessica was saying how she was ashamed to be related to Evan. I said how I honestly don't even like Evan that much anymore. Me and him used to be close but obviously that changed as he started making disappointing decisions and after he traumatized me. Jessica started asking for more information I tried to dismiss it but it was clear she was persistent and wasn't going to give up. I decided to tell her. I told her that Evan had sexually abused me in elementary school and how I am really scared and uncomfortable around him now. I asked Jessica if she was upset with me and she said she wasn't. She even told me Evan watched as one of his friends sawed her and did nothing to stop it. I took this as she understood what I had gone through and was on my side. I was false. After the vacation ended and we got home I discovered something. Evan posted a video with the text. When your little cousin makes up a rumor about you saw Ingham, and in the audio he called me a bitch. The only way he could have found it would be through Jessica because nobody else who knows even talks to him. I was extremely upset I am terrified of Evan and the fact he now knows means he could ruin my life. I haven't told my parents yet. Out of fear they won't believe me or worse. I'm furious Jessica would betray me like this. By confessing to her I put myself at risk, and her choice to tell him about this is leaving me in a dangerous situation. I feel absolutely stupid for trusting her to keep this to herself. I honestly just blame myself I got myself into a pretty bad situation here. Too long did not read. Dot. I told my younger cousin her brother sexually abused me and she told him what I said. He then posted a video calling me a bitch for making up rumors. I'm scared of what's going to happen next and regret telling her. Update. My parents have been told and were very supportive there were lots of tears and we agreed for none of my siblings to ever be left alone with Evan again and that I will be starting therapy moving forward. Thank you for the support. Don't blame yourself. You did nothing wrong. You regret telling the truth? You didn't do anything wrong. This Jessica sounds like the kind of person that likes to cause drama, and sounds gossipy. They were willing to betray your trust, or she misguidedly tried to confront her brother. Regardless, she is now untrustworthy. Don't be afraid of the truth getting out, you've done nothing wrong. Definitely talk to your parents about this over internet strangers. There is a whole different issue at hand if your parents aren't understanding and make this their problem too. At this point just own it, he is scared shitless someone can believe you. Today I fucked up by telling him to grow up. I, 18 female, have been crushing on a guy, 18 male, for about 6 months, he goes to my college and I added him on snap, we started to text but he's very bad at replying to people and takes at least 3-5 days to reply to a message and this really annoyed me. He has also been leading me on slightly by flirting with me every now and then, he called me gorgeous but told my friend he said it to help aid my character more, because he wasn't sure if he liked me or not. He found out that I like him through his friend and has known for about 3 months, but never brought it up to me so I didn't know he knew. Fast forward to now, I messaged him and said that he's giving me mixed signals and that he's confusing me because he flirts with me, then leaves me undelivered for several days. I said that he needs to grow up and start replying to people or he's going to hurt people and confuse them like he's done to me. I then asked if he liked me and he replied with, I find you canny and nice, but I'm too inconsistent to date anyone and would be useless in a relationship, plus I plan on being single forever and ever, amen. That way I can live in a man cave that I clean out once a decade and eat my body weight in food every day. I feel like he thinks this is all a joke and I don't know how to react. My friends say that he doesn't put effort into anything and that he's not good for friendship, never mind a relationship. He said that he still wants to hang out and that he'll turn up at some point this week if he has time. This is the first proper crush I've ever had and I'm very hurt. My friends say that I'm being crazy and delusional and I'm starting to think they are right. Too long did not read. I asked a boy out and he isn't putting any effort in or being serious about any of this and my friends think I'm crazy. Ah. Time is way too precious to waste on someone who doesn't feel the same way, even more so while young. The one you want want make you chase it. GLHF. Take the hint. He's just not that into you. Bruh the dude is not into you and or is already peeling back someone else. As is life. If a guy gives you excuses like that, then he probably isn't interested. 
And you didn't ask him out, you asked him if he liked you. If you want a full answer, then literally ask him out. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be a no, or more excuses which are also a no. But either way, just assume it ain't happening and move on. I personally dislike people who can't be clear, and I find these type of people to be a waste of time. So, I wouldn't bother with someone like this any more than you already did. New Hun, you are the one who needs to grow up here. Just because a guy flirts a bit with you, doesn't mean he is planning to play house with you. A flirt is just one of life's spices, not a courtship, or a promise of intent of anything. I think it was a good idea that you asked him about his intentions, but only as long you actually listens to his response. He made it abundantly clear that he is not into you and he is not aiming for an relationship of any sort. The only one who might be hurting your feelings or is making you confused is yourself, because you won't accept his rejection. 